deep breathing. Greetings and love and kindness, family. I'm Karen Khadija Davis, folks, the one and only Conscious Self Healthcare educator and host of the Conscious Self Healthcare Conversation Radio Show. Every Wednesday from 4 p.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 1 p.m. to 2 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Community, this is your time to share your wellness stories and how you move from disease care to conscious self health care. I want to hear your story. We want to hear from you. Join the conversation each Wednesday. Call in and share how you shift out of chronic disease care stress. Right here on InnerLightRadio.com, the healing frequency. This is Dr. K, and I am looking forward to our conversation. So call in and share. Health is consciousness, and healing is a function of consciousness. Come on, family. It's time to rock the world. With the new frontier of conscious self health care, why I share my wellness story with you right here on InnerLightRadio.com, the healing frequency. <sighs> uh, taking a deep, deep breath. How you doing, community? Are you dancing with me? Are you moving that body? Are you moving it in mind? it all together. You create a mighty, mighty vortex. Oh, take those deep, deep breaths. Moving that body. Thank you for dancing with me. Six five twenty nineteen, June fifth. How you feeling, family? Five days into a new month. Five days into a new time. How you feeling? Keep moving to the beat in your mind. Keep taking those deep breaths. Feeling that vibration in the body. From here to toe, feel it circulate. I mean, you got to do it on purpose. You got to have purpose when you're breathing. You got to have purpose in your soul. You want to feel it when you tighten up your shoulders and feel your body and you take that deep breath and then you let it out. Mm, it feels good. And it calms you down. Whew, and it makes your body feel kind of warm inside when you take those deep breaths. Not giving your power away to anybody at any time for any reason. And there's a lot going on, so you got to be in tune. And tune to yourself. Like my book, Tune Into Yourself Through the Magic of Poetry. That all your words bring poetry and sweet harmony to your body, to your being, to your surroundings. Taking that deep breath all the time. Definitely when you wake up in the morning from out of that deep, deep sleep where you go to rejuvenate. When you wake up in the morning, you just stretch before you get out of the bed and... And you take a deep, deep breath and you say, good morning. I say, good morning, Karen. Woo, we're here today. We're back on planet Earth. We're alive and we're in living color. How you doing, everybody? Welcome to the Conscious Self Healthcare Conversation Radio Show. I'm your host, Karen Khadija Davis, folks, the one and only Conscious Self Healthcare Educator, helping you understand what your body symptoms are trying to say to you. As we take those deep, 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 deep breaths, activate that kundalini snake in the body while we're on this show. We sit back and we tune into ourselves. 
and we ask ourselves those needed questions. Ah, and I say, how can I help you slay your health care fears? You know, that false education accepted as reality. That false education that they be putting out to have you accepted as reality that you got to sift through sometimes and find the real education within there that lets you bring out that truth that's within you. Education means to bring that within without. Ah, you got to look at all that information, all that education, and you have to filter through it. But when you do it from the soul of your body, that job become easy. And so when that false evidence appearing real shows up, you know, that false evidence, evidence all over the place and all fields and all genres, they say, this is evidence. We have the proof. We have scientific fact that we did this research and we did that research and we did a double, double, triple blind placebo effect. And we came out with this answer. And then 20 years later, they got a new one. We got to know how to sit back and evaluate that information, that education, and see how true it is to our being. And is it our being, that inner wealth that we have within us, each individual that vibrates that energy out for themselves and bring everything back into alignment. So through the week, you know what I ask you to do, sit back, tune into yourself. Ah, feel the magic of your own poetry and your own vibration. And y'all know how we do it here. Love, the laws of vibrational energy. So when I vibrate to that frequency of love, the higher vibration of that word, not just how it is for family, friends, a lover, a husband, a wife, or someone like that, but the being of your essence, love. It's the power that brings my entire life together. I just love seeing this every Wednesday. Y'all know why the secret, though? I say it every morning. <laughs> it heals, renews, restores, and empowers me with divine energy and life. Ah, and I think on that vibration, every time somebody brings something to me and it's out of balance, I say, I am love in action, and so is this person, too. They're love in action. I'm the master of my positive self-expression, and we all have to vibrate that positive self-expression. Ah, for our own natural being. Because you see, we are here to be givers and receiver of love. To be givers and receivers of love. Because that's all everybody wants. It's the feeling of this oneness of joy, of love, of happiness, of harmony, of peace. We want a feeling and we can't get it from religion and we can't get it from a lot of things. But we can get in when we understand and know thyself as we take those deep, 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 deep breaths and focus on the truth of life. Because, you know, like I always say as a reminder, that breath is our connection, the higher, the heavenly state to the state that we are here on planet Earth. We took that breath. And when we took that breath, we did what? Y'all know what I'm going to say. What am I going to say? We gave added speed and added power to that lymphatic system. That's how we keep this body purified here. We're going to have cellular malfunctions, family. We're going to have them. People give them different names, diseases, diseases, and all kinds of names within that category. But cells are going to malfunction according to how they receive an information, how that vibration is, what's going on in that intersecting the area of the body where the excess fluid and excess sodium can come and pile up so high, be like the levees bursting. And it goes in the organs and it makes the organs become hollow inside. Even the ones that's already hollow become hollower and they can't hear right. They can't get the frequency right and they can't form right. So they show some stagnation and some blockages because there's lack of quality oxygen. Ah, and the first form of oxygen comes from the breath. That's why it's called the first food of life, the breath. So you didn't let nobody get to you this week, did you? And if you did, you know what you were supposed to do. You were supposed to sit back and take that deep, deep breath. Ah, because we know how the master says it. Y'all know I fashioned my wellness center after the teachings of Reverend Knight. Because it says that you must become independent and know thyself. And when you know thyself and you have a little bit of anatomy and physiology and you understand how your body works, and you know the things that you are not giving yourself on a regular basis and you know what you are giving yourself, 
you can best determine what's going on with your body and how it got out of balance and how it may even lead you into the hospital because you just got so out of balance. But then you remembered, you took a moment to be still and you thought about how did I really get here? Do I really have a deficiency for anything in this hospital? Oh, rest? Oh, maybe that's why I put myself there to get some rest, but how can you rest? When they're coming in every hour, checking your pressure, checking your vitals, making you feel so very, very important, making you feel like they're taking so good care of you. And they are to a certain point. But nobody takes care of you like you take care of yourself. So we want to be like Reverend Ike and we want to think a little bit like him when he says, you are the master of your thoughts and mind. He said, tell your mind what to think. Tell your feelings what to feel. Tell your body how to react. When they get into a certain state, that means you may have to regroup. You may have to do some cell talk. You may have to talk to your cells, the big human holographic cell, and start talking down and filtering that information down into the individual cells and the cells that make up those organs. Tell your body how to react. The same way I had to tell my body how to react once I was in the hospital coming out of that stroke and understanding that, yeah, the body got a little sluggish. Things got a little uh, uh, filled up with inflammation and fluid in the brain and all of that. But I need to sit down and allow things to move and flow with ease and adjust itself. I don't need to be here doing what they said. You know what I mean? I don't need to be here thinking like they're thinking because I know the power that's within me. And I know what I have to do. So I had to say, let me uh, get back on track. I'm a lithologist. I'm a doctor of lithology. What did I, what, 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 what did I do? And you don't have to be one when you study anatomy and physiology. Join my group on Facebook, Lymphatic Wellness, get the book, and understand the lymphatic system. And know why that breath is so important, because it's not like the heart that's a pump for the secretory system. That breath is a pump for the lymphatic system, that purification system. That's the most important system in the body, because if we can get everything in, but we can't keep it clean, y'all know what the heck happened to a place that's dirty and filthy that's not clean. Y'all know about the waste fields. Y'all know about these kind of things. You know about a trash can when you fill it up in your house. You got to take that bag out sooner or later. So you got to allow these pumps to work and keep the body clean, and that's through the breath. Ah, so setting back, taking those deep, deep breaths. So you must tell your human holographic image what to do, how to act, and how to think. Call it insanity or call it sanity. Call it what you want, but we got to be able Two, stay in an imaginary state of understanding. That's the quickest way to reach what you want to reach while you're here on planet Earth. So thank you for tuning in to the Conscious Self Healthcare Conversation Radio Show right here on Inner Light Radio, which is the healing frequency. Ah, the healing frequency where your transformation begins. Are you ready for some transformation? Are you ready for some inner works? Are you ready to sit back and tune into yourself? Because if you didn't give your chance or your body that opportunity all week long, when you listen to the rebroadcast show, that could be your moment or it could be your moment right now for those that are tuned in and sitting back and saying this is the time that I can take those deep, deep breaths and I can sit back and think on what's being said and I can think on what's in my mind and I can tie it in and I can see how well I'm treating my body and what I'm doing to my body. If I say I want healing, if I say I want health, if I say I want wellness, I can sit back and I can think about what I've been doing. And definitely if I'm a listener to uh, Wellness Wednesday, I get it all day long. I get nothing but powerful information to empower me to do the best that I can do for my body. I make the decision, so I won't have to carry nobody else energy in that, saying, ah, oh, they talked me into it. Don't let nobody talk you into anything. Sit back, become your own wellness doctor, and I'm going to share with you how to do that. Ah, So the post went out today, said we was going to do a little bit of talking. We're going to finish up talking about the nerve force. So let me just share that with you while you sit back and you take those deep, deep breaths. And I'll be taking them in mind and you tell yourself where you want to start from and what kind of breath you want to take. There are so many, many different breaths you can take, but you sit back and you do the one that's best for you because the thing is, is you want to give added speed to that lymphatic system. So I say, 
gracious words are a honeycomb, sweet to the soul and healing to the bones. That's the Proverbs, you know. And that's what I'm hoping that I am able to transmit to you through the vibrations and frequencies of the Conscious F Healthcare Conversation Radio Show. Heart to heart, healthy living. That's what it's all about, taking those deep, deep breaths. So I say, make a deal with yourself. Take care of yourself. Start your day off right. Deep breaths when you awaken. Wake up your body with a simple but sweet body movements to get your energy levels flowing. Yeah, when you wake up in the morning while still in bed, bless your day with divine words of thought as you take those deep, deep breaths and do some body movement before you get out of bed. And if your partner's there with you, they could be moving to the rhythm of what you're doing while they sleep and you won't be disturbing them. But take that moment to do the full stretch, take a deep breath and be thankful for the day, bless your day and get up and start moving on your way. Okay, family? Okay, so you're going to do that now. You want to take that opportunity to take your time and be with yourself. So take those deep, 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 deep breaths. So a post that I put out June the 1st to share with the community, as I always do, you can friend me on Facebook, come a part of my groups. So the post read, get radical. Stop living on pharmaceuticals if you're living on pharmaceuticals. And you may see a change happening in your body. This is the Conscious Self Healthcare Conversation Radio Show. The goal in, in Conscious Self Healthcare is to stop the pharmaceuticals for healthcare if that's what you're doing. Because you want to reach self care. And when a cellular malfunction shows up that might take you to the hospital, remember, it is not a disease, it's cellular malfunction showing up for you to determine what is missing in your personal healthcare plan. And for sure, it is not a pharmaceutical family. It is not a pharmaceutical. So a drug, the pharmaceutical doctor will only give you medication and poor advice. And yes, I say this poor advice to health benefits because it benefits them and not you. That advice they're giving you to take the pharmaceuticals and not to do something else to see what's going on with your body. They brought about that stagnation. They want you to take that pharmaceutical. But you got to think about it. What is the purpose of that pharmaceutical? And how was that pharmaceutical derived? Can you go back to the purest form of that pharmaceutical and do it through nature? That's what you got to ask yourself. Because once they turn it into a pharmaceutical, it loses all of its vital ingredients from once it came. And we have to take that into mind. So you got to ask yourself, is it your goal to live on pharmaceuticals? If it is, then you are right. If not... Are you ready to make conscious self-health care moves? Mental observation view is essential for self-success. you got to sit back and view your own actions and view yourself and do things for yourself. So are you ready to shift out of chronic disease care stress? I say, are you ready to shift out of chronic disease care stress? Are you ready to become your own wellness doctor? And what does that mean when I say I become my own wellness doctor? What does it mean to you? I'm sharing with you every day what it means to me, and so is so many others. That's why I invite you to come dance with me and take a deep breath with me. One love, one community, living in unity, taking those deep, 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 deep breaths. So I'm going to come back, and I'm going to share a major article that I put out through my blog, through all my social media and an article uh, that may be forthcoming in a uh, newspaper. So, Jamal, we're going to take a station break. We're going to come back. I'm going to share a little bit of information. I'm going to, I forget y'all, I'm going to remember to do the next segment of Nerve Force with you. Sit back and take a deep breath and listen to the commercial. Is it time for a new approach to your health care? 
Are you ready to leave the dark ages of disease care management and pharmaceuticals? If your answer is yes, get ready to relearn, rethink, and rewrite your personal health care prescription plan with Dr. K. She is a certified lithologist and Nest health care provider, sharing the new signs of information as medicine and cellular ecology. Did you know that the field of epigenetics states that you are more than just your genes and those genes do not control your biology? Yes, that's correct. Schedule a Skype, phone, or office visit with Dr. K and get on board the Friendship Train to Healthcare Freedom. 202-248-7749. That's 202-248-7749. Visit us on the web. For selllife.com. The number four, the words sell, C E L L L I F E dot com. And my brothers, come on, let's help one another. All of my sisters and my brothers. Never to forget that together we stand and divided we fall. Together we stand. All for one. We gotta stand together and one for all. Oh, 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 let's help. help. Let's take a look at the press together. One another. One another. All of my sister and my brother. You taking all the things in the That's my go to song. Gotta help one another. Taking those deep, deep, deep breaths. Did you take those deep breaths for him? Keep on taking. Them. That's the secret to it. Oh, we gotta keep that lymphatic system moving all the time. We gotta give it that added speed through that deep, deep breath. You know, get rid of hate, cause you can't have hate in your heart. I'm telling you, you're not getting nowhere with it. It creates that stagnation and that blockage and that lack of quality oxygen. I want to tell you something. You gotta help one another. That's why my establishment is called Health Education for Longevity and Peace, cause we gotta help one another. And how do we help one another? When somebody come to you and they got that stagnated energy and you feel that stagnated energy with them, you just stand before them and you give them a nice smile and you just take a deep, deep breath. And they say, what you doing? I'm trying to tell you something. But I'm trying to tell you something. I'm trying to give you a message. I'm trying to tell you how to center your stuff. Your energy is just a little bit too hyper. It's just a little bit too high. You know, bring it down. Because even too much joy can bring about a, a cascade of effects in your body that you really don't want from joy. You know, so we got to always keep a steady balance. And that's what that lymphatic system does for us. And that's why I am just thrilled at what I do and what I know. And we all have going to have cellular my functions. And when I got my big cellular my function, people want to say, oh, you this and you that. And you say this and you say that. And look what happened to you. We all create cellular my functions. Look what happened to me. Look what's going to happen to you, but how are you going to deal with it? Are you going to give your power away? Are you going to become afraid of the truth that you know within inside of you, that you know about life, that you know about living, that you know about what to do because you created a cell, your malfunction that may take you to the hospital. What you going to do when you get there? Are you going to do what I did? Karen, what did you do? You know what you did. You was going through a lot and it got to you. So this is what showed up, the weakest part of your body. You know why I was weak there. You know what happened to you years ago. And so it showed up this way. Now what you going to do? I'm going to sit here and get some good quality rest. Well, that's what I'm going to do while I'm in here. And I know I can't argue with them too much because if you put yourself in here, you know they're going to give you some drugs and that IV. And I'm just sitting back and I'm just saying to myself, just let it all work its way through. Just let it go through with ease. Don't let it be one of them time bombs they put in your body to go off later. Just let everything step out with ease. Those are the things that I say to myself to relax myself. I don't criticize myself. So I'm going to share with you of the six that we were talking about last week, building powerful nerve force. And this book came from Paul C. Braggs, ND, PhD, life extension specialist, the Bragg line of literature products. This is his little powerful book that I'm so happy that I still have and was driven to last week to 
continue me on my strength journey here on planet Earth that took me here and allows me to share with you. So set back, continue taking your deep breaths. I'm going to share this one with you, and then I'm going to share the post that I put out this week. As you're sitting back, taking your deep breaths, focusing on yourself and thinking what you need to fine-tune health. Is it the health that needs to be fine-tuned? Your financial approach to life that needs to be fine-tuned? You know, wherever it is, is giving you a major thought. You need to sit back and relax and deep breathe into it and let the answers rise out. And definitely don't do this one. I'll quickly go over the first fears that we covered. Um, we're talking about, he says, there are six basic fears. Uh, the majority of people, if asked what they fear most, will reply, I fear nothing. They reply would be inaccurate because every human being is at one time or another the victim of one or more of the six basic fears. We talked the fear of poverty last week, the fear of ill health last week, the fear of old age last week. We're going to do the fear of criticism. We might get to the fear of the loss of love. <clears throat> But I'm going to do the field of criticism because everybody sit back and feel like they're always being criticized. They can't tell when somebody's sharing some truth with them or somebody's criticizing them because basically they're criticizing themselves. And we want to sit back and think about that word. That's such a crucial word, um, criticism, and the way we look at it from the point of somebody sharing some information with us or we sharing with ourselves. But he said that's a fear that we all have, the fear of criticism. When the nerve force dips to a low level, one becomes extremely sensitive. Such a person feels that all eyes are upon him, ready to tear him apart with criticism. To eliminate this fear, the first thing you must get into your mind is that many people are full of envy, and the only way they can justify their own weaknesses is to be constantly criticizing the other fellow. Actually, such criticism is self-handed compliment. Actually, such criticism is a left-handed compliment. It means that you are accomplishing something which the other person is not able to do. A friend of mine, a veteran of the political arena, has often remarked, if someone isn't shooting bobs at you or daggers at you, you aren't getting anywhere. The only time to worry is when you don't get any criticism. It means you're standing still. Remember, no matter what you do, you cannot please everyone. Remember, no matter what you do, you cannot please everyone. Sometimes, not even your closest blood relatives. I well remember many years ago when I started in this health way of living. Some of my brothers and sisters criticized me and called me a health nut, food fattest, health crank, and many other uncomplimentary names. But my nerve force was at a high level, and they could not disturb my peace of mind. So your nerve force need to get at a high level so nobody can disturb your peace of mind. The long years have proven that my health way of life continues to build powerful nerve force, resulting in vigorous health and living in a state of agelessness. I have long since buried my critics. Hmm. Living by wisdom and intelligence, I let criticism pass over me like water off a duck's back. <sighs> living by wisdom and intelligence... I let criticism pass over me like water off a duck's back. I live by the finer force of nature. I am one with God and nature. Therefore, why should I let some sick mind have any influence over me? I am living at a high rate of mental, physical, and spiritual vibrations. Can we say that as an affirmation? I am living at a high rate of mental, physical, and spiritual vibration. Oh, one more time, my body says, I'm living at a high rate of mental, physical, and spiritual vibration. When you live by truth and intelligence, petty criticism cannot touch you. You are impervious to slander. No words can hurt you. And the talk of small-minded people, the fear of criticism, 
sit back and think about that. How much vibration are you giving to criticism? And is that criticism really a uh, support to you, depending on who it's coming from? And some people are slick talkers. They are slick in their words, and they use that against you to make you not move forward. So you got to be conscious of your life. Sit back and take that deep, deep breath and be in tune with yourself, family. Be in tune with yourself. Be happy with your choices. Know what you're doing in life. Take time to learn anatomy. Take time to learn physiology. Take time to learn about nutrition, understanding food. And if you are just a raw eater or a vegetarian or you're just a feudatarian or whatever you are, you have to make sure you give yourself the right balance of vitamins, minerals, and enzymes, no matter what you're doing, because you're going to create some balance, some imbalance somewhere if you just do one thing and don't do the whole package, because it's not available to us the way we think that it should be available to us if we just drop this particular food or we don't eat this particular way or we don't do that. We're going to miss something. We're going to need some good vitamins and minerals and enzymes, and you got to find your right supply to help you do that. One of mine is Common Sense Herbs. I love everything they put out to assist the body because I know where it came from, the heart of the person that created that line. And so if I can recommend one to you, that's that. Do you want to step back and you want to think about what you're doing and how you're doing? So let me share this post that I put out with you to um, the community this week. How do you make a person a slave to the medical system? Disease, thinking, care, and pharmaceuticals. How do you make a person a slave to the medical system? Disease, thinking, care, and pharmaceuticals. At the weakest period, your medical doctor will use his point to put fear in you to have surgeries, put you on their cell-killing medication. It's no secret. They, the doctors, tell you this. And they also tell you that there is no other choice for you. You feel as if you are dying and you are not ready to die yet. So you let go of your natural understanding and you start working from what I say is a man-made mindset of human consciousness. And take the drug and have the surgery and start believing the big lie that only they can save you. Now that your body has turned against you. And not that you have turned against your human body. Wake up. You are being victimized. You see, I can recall that over a year ago, the doctors and medical staff at Howard University Hospital, when I was told that if I didn't take the medication prescribed, that I would return back with another stroke in three months if I refused to take the pharmaceuticals. They sent several doctors in my room to try and convince me that I needed the drugs to live and heal and to stay well. Well, that was just too much for me to bear. Trying everything to make me scared of myself. They tried everything to make me scared of myself. I say it's a medical conspiracy, a profit at the expense of human health. What a shame. What a shame that our medical system team of people would do this to people. The false education appearing real. Stop the fear mongering. Disease mongering is a practice of medical lies in every possible human behavior or psychological function or physiological function that can be identified. The sole purpose of disease mongering, of course, is to sell more high-profit prescription drugs and convince you that your cellular malfunctions are diseases and you cannot correct your cellular malfunction naturally without the daily use of pharmaceuticals. I said, give me a break. What will it take for people to change their faith from the world's way, man's way of disease thinking? What will it take for you if you are there, if you are headed in that direction? What do you need to pull you back, to reel you back, to sit back and think? Tune into yourself and listen to that inner wealth. How do you heal your body and mind when you have been told such negative information and now you are afraid to trust you? The false evidence appears real. The blood work, the scans, all say that you are dying to them. And maybe 
It did not. They lied to you because they can. We have seen reports of the medical doctors doing this, exaggerating your test results. You have pain or discomfort, and you be believe, and you begin to believe them, trust them. You take the prescribed drugs. They take away your hope of self-healing, the body healing itself with the correct raw materials and correct state of consciousness when you take those drugs. You take not one or two, but three and four and five medications, maybe more. At the same time, you may even be given a super pill. Stop all what you're doing. We got one super a pill for you to take. They, the medical doctors, that's who they are in this incident. The medical doctors will say, now you only need to take this one pill for the rest of your life that you here on planet Earth and you'll be all right. You won't end up in a nursing home and then we really got you and your family for a long, long time. Just take this one pill and you're going to be super fine because it's a super pill. And because you're scared and you're tired and you're frustrated, you say, oh, I can just take this one pill. It's not going to make that big a difference. And what's going on with me? So now the false education appears real because the doctor said so. The doctor say, now stay in your lane. Tell that person out there in that holistic arena, in that uh, functional medicine arena, even other doctors, tell them to stay in their lane. Stay in their lane. And do as I say. I say. They say, I'm the doctor. Not you. Not them. Oh, they are a doctor, but they left the medical field. They don't know. Listen to me. Listen to me. That's what they tell you. Yes, you are the medical doctor. And why can't I be my own wellness doctor? I can read. I can study anatomy, physiology, and cell life and nutrition too. I can do all those things. I can do my own research to say if this is the best option for me. Don't deny me of that. Yes, I can. Don't make me feel bad about that. Yes, I can. Don't tell me that I'm a fool trying to be a doctor. I can study the same information you did. Just because I don't have the title don't mean I don't know the information in the process. Yes, I can. And that does not take away from your skill set. It means that I have a choice and you allow me to listen to my choice. You're not putting fear in me because another way for you to make added money is how many drugs, how many prescriptions can you put me on? Can you keep me on? Can you tear my body down? Can you refer me to another doctor that's going to put me on some more medication? You got to stop, family. We got to think about it. I say face everything and rise like Dr. Chris. Face everything and rise. Have no fears. You will never fear ill health or old age when you live by the laws of nature and the laws of vibrational energy. Fear is dangerous because it generally lives and it exists in the subconscious. The subconscious mind that people are living by daily when they think they're living by their superconscious and their conscious mind, but them programs are still in them and they don't even see that they're vibrating to them, they're living into it, that they're creating all this whirlwind of fluctuation, a tornado or a tornado or a tornado because they're not paying attention to their life. Whether it is not easily detected by its victims, you do not see that you are a victim to a program that told you pharmaceuticals are safe and the medical doctors are right. Too many doctors are letting you know the ones that have retired and now they can speak truth to their power of what they know. They have to wait until they retire so they can say the things that they need to say. Some are bold enough to say why they're still there because they're walking out the door. But it's time, people. There is no field of education or study that an average person cannot go and study for themselves and understand. I put out this post and somebody said that you're not right for telling people this. I don't know why people got to keep putting stuff on my post telling me I'm not right when that's what I do. I'm a conscious self-health care educator. I'm giving you information to educate yourself. I'm giving you both sides of it for you to make the best decisions for you. Sit back and take a deep breath. Stop telling people what they can't do when you see posts out there and talking about you going against a doctor. A doctor study like everybody else. It's a job to them. They got to make their money. How they make their money is how sickly you say. How sickly can they keep you? Can they refer you to another doctor when they finish with their side? Can they do some more tests? And they can always find something wrong in a test. But does it mean you need a drug? You need surgery? You got to sit back and got to think about it. It is a profession. 
Yes, it is. It is, too. And they do do that, too. Yes, they do. <laughs> Take a deep breath. They do. Live by the laws of nature, and you will be rewarded with radiant health all the ages of your life here on planet Earth. So banish the thought of being a diseased victim, getting old, and your cells are breaking down. Study the signs of growing younger as you live longer. Study the signs of growing younger as you live longer. And remember that there is no such thing as old age. And my body's getting old, and that's why I'm having these problems now. Your body's getting old because you didn't do what you needed to do. The same way you didn't take care of that car and it get old and rusty. Same thing happens to your body. You got to always be on top of things. Ah, <sighs> So like... um. Professor Bragg says in his book, Nerve Force, there is no cell in your or in our bodies that is over 11 months old. There is not a cell in our bodies that is over 11th month old, with the exception of our bones and teeth. No part of us is old, but our thinking and outdated states of consciousness. That's why I ask you to come dance with me every Wellness Wednesday Shift out of chronic disease, care, stress, and live. Step up out of the dark ages of disease, care, family. It doesn't matter where you are, what you went through, what you had, what you're going through. Take a moment. The first thing you got to do is, yeah, I'm saying it, consider those pharmaceuticals. How can your body begin to get well when you're taking a pharmaceutical that's changing how your body performs and operates? And what does most of them do? They shut down that immune system. And it shuts down your lymphatic system. And when you have lung issues and you can't deep breathe to help that lymphatic system, your body gets into a swamp state. And you know what a flood looks like. That's a swamp. So that's my talk for today. That's my share for this week. As I remind you to deep, deep breathing through the week and tune into yourself through the magic of your own poetry, of your own words, and take a moment to be still. We're going to close out with a clip from Reverend Ike. We might get through it all, and we may not. But I want to thank you. This is a 13-minute clip. I think we're going to make it. How your attitude can make you wealthier than any talent of education. Attitude. Attitude, attitude, attitude. What's your attitude? I got a pleasant attitude because I don't care what people are trying to do, what they think they're doing, or what they think they may can do or have done. I'm my attitude, and I vibrate love. Laws of vibrational energy. So thank you for tuning in. Visit my website. Check out the tools that I use, the Nest Health Wellness Tools and the Max Pulse. They can tell you everything from the quantum level to the physical level where you can truly become your own wellness doctor and decide what approach you're going to take to your health care. Let's play that clip, Jamal, on our way closing out. And thank you once again for tuning in, family, and sharing this radio broadcast with a friend. And visit us on Ladies the Ladies and gentlemen, attitude is so very important. We're going to skip around on the lesson notes because right away I'd like to begin by defining attitude. That's one of the formalities of homiletics which I will observe in deference to my training at the theological cemetery. Seminary. What is attitude? Attitude is my mental approach to life. Say that. Attitude, Attitude. is my mental approach to life. My disposition toward life. Attitude is my disposition toward myself. Other people people and things. things. You know, and it's it's an interesting thing. The way you treat other people is the result of your attitude towards yourself. If you see somebody who's always nasty, they've got a nasty attitude about themselves. Now, what's an attitude? It's a right spirit, a right feeling about yourself. A right feeling toward other people. And here again, you can't have a right feeling toward other people until, first of all, you feel right about yourself. 
And I'm so happy for the second Sunday morning, you know, the, the evangelist on television is talking about feeling right about yourself in the Lord. Isn't it wonderful? Boy, this stuff is getting around. <laughs> so whenever you're going to deal with life, life is not really something you deal with out there. Life is really dealing with your own attitude toward yourself in your own mind. Right attitude, a right spirit, a happy, loving, believing approach to life. This is right attitude. A good, loving feeling toward yourself. And I want to ask you a question to interrogate yourself with from time to time. Do I have a good, loving feeling toward myself? Say that. Do I have a good, loving feeling toward myself? I mean, when all hell seems to break loose, when things don't seem to go right, when other people seem to be out of order, just stop. And ask yourself that question. Hey, so much for all of that. But the question is, do I have a good, loving feeling toward myself? A beautiful song says in part, let there be peace on earth and let it begin with me. And so if you want to bring order in your affairs, it's got to begin with your right, loving attitude toward yourself. All right? Right attitude is a good, loving feeling toward yourself, everyone and everything. Right attitude is an optimistic disposition. A right attitude is expecting the best, believing that good comes out of everything. It says here, food. It should have been a G. That good comes out of everything. That's interesting. Like Mrs. Hedgepath told us, Friday night that somebody, while she was putting up a Christmas lights around her house, which is on the corner, as she does every year, and it looks so beautiful, a lady came by and said to her, yeah, your lights are sure beautiful. I hope nobody steals them. <laughs> Guess what? They walked off. And so I suggested to her, I says, okay, somehow or the other, we've got to make good out of this. I don't know what you're being told by this, but somewhere again in the Bible there's a scripture. You meant it to me for evil, but the Lord meant it to me for good. I like the man who has such a beautiful attitude that he says, when life gives me a lemon, I make lemonade. <laughs> Let me hear you say that together. When life gives me a lemon, I make lemonade. Isn't that good? So you got a lot of lemons. What are you going to do with them? You're going to sit there just sucking them crying? No, oh, this is a, oh, such a sour lemon. Make lemonade. And if you have a right spirit, a right attitude, you'll be able to take negative situations and bring good out of it. Now back up to the top of the lesson notes. Your attitude will make you or break you. And I want you to tell yourself this in the first person. My attitude will make me or break me. Say it. My attitude will make me or break me. And I'll tell you this. You're not broke until your attitude is broken. You're not done for until your attitude gets wrong. Remember that in any situation that you've got to face. As long as you can keep a right attitude, you have got the upper hand. Wow. As long as I can maintain the right attitude, I have the upper hand. Say that. As long as I can maintain the right attitude, I have the upper hand. That's what Reverend Ike means when he says you can't lose with the stuff I use. You know, there's a song out. I heard it on the radio the other day. That there, there are songs out on two of my cliches. You can't lose with the stuff I use. And uh, what's the other thing that I... There's some, you can be what you want to be, do what you want to do, and have what you want to have. 
Both of them. I was listening to the coloreds at the black station the other day. <laughs> and they, and it, I just, just happened to hear both of those songs. I said, well, God bless them. They're catching on. All right, I want to go back to what I just said. As long as I maintain the right attitude, I have the upper hand. Remember that the next time you want to fly off of the handle. Remember that the next time it seems as if you're getting the short end or the little end of the stick. What is important? It is important that I maintain the right attitude and pray that prayer. Create in me a clean heart, O oh God, and renew a right spirit within me. Because your attitude will make you or break you. No matter how much education or talent you may have, your attitude will hold you down if you don't work with it and make it right and keep it right. This is why there's so many educated and talented people who fail because they've got everything but a right attitude. So you've got to watch your attitude. And I don't knock education at all. Get all of it that you can. But remember, attitude is important. Sometimes you see people without education are oh, too much talent that have become rich in money, health, happiness, love, success, and prosperity because they established a right attitude. A right attitude will make you rich in every way, regardless of how much or how little education, talent, or religion you have. <laughs> yes, and it may seem paradoxical to you, but I've seen people who have a lot of religion but a stinking attitude. Can I get an amen on that? See, some people have a whole lot of religion and they've got an attitude that nobody's right but me. Some people have a whole lot of religion and have an attitude, ain't nobody going to heaven but me. Well, wherever they're going, I don't want to go there anyway. <laughs> so you got to watch your attitude. Attitude could be the most important thing that a person sometimes overlooks. This is so simple that the high-minded miss it. And people in general pay it no attention. This trips them up. They fail, but they never know why. They never see it. I told you in the last lesson about a young man that I personally knew. While I was going to school, studying for the ministry that I'd already been in since I was 14, he was going to a very prestigious university, very brilliant young man, all A student, very systematic. I mean, he was just like the perfect man, except for one thing. He had an attitude that anybody who had less formal education than he had was a fool and proceeded to sort of treat everybody else who did not have as much form formal education as fools. And even his relatives that he lived with at the time who were helping him through school, he even had an attitude toward them. When this young man got his prestigious degree and went out into the job marketplace for a long time, he could not find a position. And just to look at it, well, such a brilliant young man from such a prestigious university, so smart, so sharp in every way, Finally, he wised up and discovered that it was his attitude that was holding him back. And he changed his attitude. And his career has been skyrocketing ever since. But the one thing that he overlooked was attitude. Now, I want you to write a question on your notes to interrogate yourself by. Am I overlooking the importance of my attitude? Say that as you write it. Come on. Am I overlooking the importance of my attitude? And I want to quote Reverend Ike's statement again and again and again on this subject. 
Life meets me just like I meet life. Say it. Life meets me just like I meet life. And you see, don't forget that. And ask yourself the question in this way as well. What attitude am I meeting life with? Say it. It's a good thing when you wake up in the morning to ask yourself the question, what attitude am I meeting life with today? Come on. What attitude am I meeting life with right now? You know, when you set out to do something, ask yourself, what's the attitude that I'm, a, that I'm going forth with in this thing? Got a beautiful letter upstairs a moment ago from a young lady who just started her business and she was telling me how well she's doing in that business and of course we're happy for her and we're, we're glad for her. And if you're starting a new venture or if you're continuing in your old venture, whatever you are doing, constantly examine your attitude. That was a great show. I want to thank you so very much for tuning in to the Conscious Self-Health Care Conversation Radio Show right here on Interline Radio. It was a pleasure having you tuning in. Now, you must tell a friend to tune in. And if you haven't called in and shared your wellness story, don't you think it's time that you help somebody with your wellness story? Call in, share your story, join the conversation. I'm Karen Khadija Davis, folks, and I invite you to visit my website, ConsciousSelfCare.com. Or you can just go to the number four, the word C-E-L-L-L-I-F-E dot com. Leave me some information. I would love to talk with you. And once again, I look forward to you joining us next Wednesday right here on the Conscious Self-Health Care Radio Show. It's a conversation where we uplift each other, where we share our wellness stories so we can help someone move from disease care to conscious self-health care. Thank you for tuning in. I look forward to hearing from you next Wednesday. These programs can change a belief you had your entire life in maybe 15, 20 minutes. Many of them create a state of super learning like you were when you were an infant. Yet there is a better and faster way even. The mind has two parts. The subconscious mind is the original brain and it can process 40 million bits of data from the environment every second. The mind is very powerful and very fast, but it's totally habitual. It's not creative. It can only play back what it learns. In evolution, the front part of the brain, the prefrontal cortex gives rise to consciousness. It's a small piece of the brain that is consciousness. Self or consciousness is an add-on option, and most people don't exercise the option. But note, it, has, it can process only about 40 bits of data per second. The subconscious mind is one million times more powerful. While the subconscious mind is fast, the conscious mind is slow at processing. That's why when you're in an emergency or stress, you operate from this one because it can operate fast and handle lots of data. But the difference between the two is this is habitual. It is the conscious mind that is creative and can generate free will. The conscious mind can control anything in your entire body. They used to say there were parts of our body that were involuntary control. But now we know that's, that's not true. For example, yogis can regulate their heartbeat, their blood pressure, 
or body temperature with conscious mind. So while the conscious mind can only handle a few things, the subconscious mind can do many, many thousands of tasks at the same time. Now recently, neuroscientists are talking about how your unconscious really shapes your life, your decisions. What do they say, according to cognitive neuroscientists, we are conscious of only about 5% of our cognitive activity. Most people, 1% of their day is in the conscious mind. So every day, you, you create only from your creation mind, your conscious mind, only about 1% of what is going on in your life. And therefore, 95 to 99% of your life comes from your programming in your subconscious mind. So what this means is maybe uh, you were the child in the store and your parents said you do not deserve. 95% of the day, you will sabotage your life to make sure you do not deserve. And the reason why is the subconscious job is to create reality out of the program. And so therefore, if you have negative programming, 95% of the day, you will create that negative experience in your life. Now here's the problem. The conscious mind and the subconscious mind work together. So whatever the conscious mind focuses on, it can control, but what it's not focusing on, the subconscious mind control. So most of our day, we are thinking about the future or thinking about the past. That's with the conscious mind. So if the conscious mind's not paying attention to right now, then everything you're doing during the day is being run by the program that you got. But the problem is, because your mind is not, the conscious mind's not paying attention, then it does not see the program being played by the subconscious mind. So most of every day, you are not playing programs that you personally want, you're playing programs that you got from other people. But you didn't see those, pay, those programs. So when your life doesn't work, you say the, the universe does not support me. And yet the truth was, it was your own invisible behavior that sabotaged you. So what's important is some people say, well, maybe I just do some positive thinking. Which mind does the positive thinking, conscious or subconscious? The conscious mind, which works at 5% a day with a 40-bit processor, and when you're doing your consciousness, are you paying attention to what's going on? Those Who's running the show? The experiential programs from the subconscious mind, and that is 95% of the day with 40 million bit processor. Does positive thinking work? Do the math. And the issue is that it's very difficult to take a small processor and overpower the large processor. And you have to use what is called will power with the emphasis on power to override. Now here is the second catch or the second problem. The subconscious mind is like a recorder tape player. It records an experience and then when you push the button, it plays the experience back. So then we take our conscious mind and we want to talk to the subconscious mind and change the program. Now, think about it this way. You have a tape player and I give you a cassette with a program. You put the tape in and you push play. And the program is going, you say, I don't like the program. Then you go up to the tape player and you say, change the program, change the program. The issue is the tape will not change by doing that but there are ways to change the program if you know how to push the record button. So your life does not reflect what you want, it reflects the program you were given. So one way out is consciousness, just be conscious and then you don't play the tape. A second way out, clinical hypnotherapy, because that puts you back in the same brain state that you were in in the learning period and then you can put a new program and rewrite the tape. Yet there is a better and faster way even. There's a group of new psychology modalities called energy psychology. There are many different versions. For example, holographic repatterning, body talk, EMDR, EFT, 
The one I am most familiar with is Psych K, P S Y C H K. These programs are like pushing the record button on the tape player. These programs can change a belief you had your entire life in maybe 15, 20 minutes. Many of them, like Psyche, create a state of super learning like you were when you were an infant. But I'm now going to show you how your thoughts go out and affect your life on the outside. EEG, you put wires on your skin and read the brain activity. MEG, the, the probe does not even touch the head. You can read your brain activity outside of your head. It's not magic. When a nerve carries a signal, it's like an electric wire. It has an electrical component, and so the electric component can be picked up by electrodes on the skin. But when a wire is carrying a current, it also has a magnetic field around it. The magnetic field passes through the skin. Your thoughts are not contained in your head. The people that you get connected to, you are entangled with. And many people are familiar, if you think about someone you, or talk about someone you haven't seen for years, and I say, oh, I haven't seen my friend John in 10 years, and the phone rings and it's John. It's like the placebo nocebo. When you think very positive thoughts of someone, they make an effort to get in touch with you. But it works both ways. If you have a negative thought about somebody, wherever they are, they will create negative talk about you. So it's very important to recognize your thoughts and your judgments are not just connected to you, they're connected to the people you talk about. You are exciting and activating those things in the world that are connected to your thoughts. When a mugger is trying to pick out which person he is going to attack, of the different people walking down the street, which one do you think gets attacked? The one who is most afraid. Because the one who is most afraid will resonate and that means that the mugger doesn't have to do anything to go boom and you get everything.